Hello and welcome to Salty About Health. My name is Delaney Algier and I'm here with my mom and co-host, Mary. So mom, why are we salty about health? Good question. It's because both of us have had struggles, some more serious than others, and no one showed us simple ways we could jump into the driver's seat and take control. And why are we sharing our views with our listeners? Well, because we want our listeners to realize that it may take time, but with some simple knowledge about health, they'll be able to make a few changes and dig deeper to take control of their well-being and live a more vibrant life. That's fantastic. But right now, before we get into all of that, we just need to do some housekeeping. Here we go. This is an opinion-based podcast. This is not in any way offered as a diagnosis or treatment for any disease, illness, or infirmity for physical or mental condition or any other condition you may have. We are not doctors or practitioners of any kind. Persons needing medical care should obtain it from a medical practitioner. So consult your practitioner before making any health decision. The opinions offered here in this podcast are ours alone. Again, we're not doctors, and the banter you're going to be listening to is our view and our view alone. Okay, that's done. We, of course, also want to have an open dialogue with our listeners. So stay tuned to the end of the episode, and we'll let you know all of the ways that we can connect. Welcome, welcome, everyone. We are happy to have you back for episode 15. We will be talking about houseplants today and how they fit into a healthy you. Yes, you are listening to Salty About Health, but really, plants can be a part of the healthy you. I know, I couldn't believe today's topic either, but I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. So mom, plants, huh? Uh, Can you clue us in to this, please? (laughs) Well, Delaney, I will do just that because I think houseplants are amazing. You know, when we think about oysters, we think about how great they are at filtering the water in which they live. In fact, just one oyster can filter up to 50 gallons, which is 227 liters of water a day, removing pollutants and chemicals. And then they taste really good too. (laughs) Yes, that is your favorite. <laughs> Raw, as I recall. Yep. Mm-hmm. Half shell. And- Raw on the half shell. Mm-hmm. Fuck shuck. Fuck <laughs> shuck. Anyways. <laughs> they are yummy. You got me to taste them last time we were up in Rhode Island. I did. <laughs> okay, so you can actually go on YouTube and see before footage of the water and after footage of the water, after placing them, you know, the oysters in the water. And... Not, yeah, I think that people thought I was going to say, and you can go on YouTube seeing Delaney do Bucka Shuck. Oh, Bucka but Shuck. no, <laughs> she will have to no. record that though. You don't have to record that because it's very common up there. So it'd be a very boring video for vendors. <laughs> They'd be like, yeah, I go every week. It's fine. <laughs> but you can see the water before and after they put the oysters in. So, and in middle school, you had a friend that lived on the Chesapeake Bay and the Department of Natural Resources would give them baby oysters to place in the water um, behind their house to help clear up the Chesapeake Bay. Do you remember? In middle school? Mm Mm-hmm. Nope. Do you remember um, who it was that, you know, you went down that one road and it was always hard getting out back on 301? Uh Victoria, I she had water behind her house. To be honest, <laughs> yeah. Well, you're the one who told me. Said, yeah. What did you do today? Oh, we went. And we put the oysters in because they would get them, and you know they have um, the Chesapeake Bay really at the time at least needed yeah. more than a I mean D rating or something. So they were um, yeah. getting a lot of oysters to put in the bay. That's cool. And actually, because we went to like the Chesapeake Bay like museum or something and do you remember the I think they still had some shells from like what oysters used to look like because they used to be like as big as your head or bigger like oh much bigger they were about half the size of your body yeah they're probably three feet long it was unbelievable it was wild because now they're like maybe like four inches long (laughs) 
<laughs> can you can you imagine trying to get the old time oysters you know in the old days when they grew that big oh my gosh Bukashuk? that'd be like a meal yeah <laughs> at shuck. no kidding that's like this feeds a family for a week <laughs> Yeah, they were huge. And yeah. it was so interesting um, for the uh, show notes. We'll have to get pictures or something and yeah. put that on there, cool. how large they used to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but okay, so how do oysters relate to houseplants? Well, <laughs> houseplants help clean the air in our homes. Of course, there are a lot of people that disagree that plants clean the air. But we do know that plants take in carbon dioxide and convert it to energy for growth. The role of carbon dioxide in plants is to foster healthier and a more productive growth in plants. And carbon monoxide, and that's what comes out of your car's tailpipe, um, does not hurt plants because plants will oxidize it into carbon dioxide, an essential material for photosynthesis. So plants take in or fix carbon dioxide from the atmosphere during photosynthesis some of the carbon dioxide is used for plant growth and some of it is used in respiration where the plant breaks down sugars to get energy. And interestingly, carbon dioxide above normal levels will increase plant growth provided all other conditions are suitable. So plants need carbon dioxide to carry out the process of photosynthesis. And I'm so tired of saying that word. <laughs> photosynthesis. I live in a sea and them and them and them and When carbon dioxide is available in excess, plants tend to increase their what, Delaney? <laughs> their rate right. of photosynthesis. <laughs> And of course, for humans, exposure to excessive carbon dioxide can produce a variety of unwanted health effects. These may include headaches, dizziness, restlessness, a tingling or a pins and needle feeling, difficulty breathing, sweating, tiredness, increased heart rate, elevated blood pressure, coma, asphyxia, and convulsions. Though I think most homes are equipped with a CO2 reader, you know, the alarms yeah. nowadays, if you um, have any gas appliances like stoves and hot water heaters, et cetera, they have CO2 readers. I feel like this should have been our Halloween episode because basically if you live in, <laughs> you get CO2 poisoning, then it's like living in a horror movie. You get tingling, you start not being able to breathe. <laughs> that's terrible. Well, that's why it's important to have those readers when you have gas appliances in your home. Okay. So that must be why a lot of people are told that they should talk to their plants, right? Because we breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide, right? Yeah, and exactly. I'm, yeah. We breathe, and, yep. Well, we're breathing in and um, oxygen and we, um, yeah, breathe out carbon dioxide. Okay. And then mom wanted me to give everyone a little science lesson here. So carbon dioxide is produced in our bodies as a result of cellular respiration, which is the process where our cells turn food into usable energy in the form of ATP, <laughs> which is funny because that's the name of like a testing process that we do at work so that's really funny um oh, wow but atp is an organic compound in this case that provides energy to drive many processes in living cells like our muscle contractions nerve impulses and chemical synthesis so during cellular respiration these vital nutrients are converted into energy in the presence of oxygen oxygen reacts with everything <laughs> the carbon yes. dioxide produced is then removed from the body by dissolution in the blood and through binding with hemoglobin to be transported to the lungs where it's exhaled out from the nose and mouth so that tied in last week episode about blood again <laughs> yes Perfect. And you said that perfectly so <laughs> and i love that you mentioned vital nutrients are converted into energy in the presence of oxygen. And as a side note, we have talked about deep breathing in other episodes, and this is one reason it is important not to be a shallow breather. 
mouth breather. Yeah, that <laughs> you need to breathe deep. But that's yeah. So okay, we're gonna get back on topic. Although <laughs> many, many biochemical reactions occur within our bodies all the time. The one that occurs inside our cells and is responsible for giving us energy is probably the most important of all. The reactants involved in the, this reaction are mainly sugars, fats, and proteins. And since it occurs in the presence of oxygen, it's known as aerobic respiration. Since glucose, fats, and proteins are all used as fuel sources for this reaction, the rate of carbon dioxide production is less than the rate of oxygen consumption. So in simple words, we produce less carbon dioxide than the amount of oxygen we consume. Okay. And that, I mean, to go all into engineering stuff, that kind of makes sense because you like for energy use, you need to always take in more than you put out because it leaves in other ways. Um, in a mechanical system, it can leave like via heat or noise. Like if something like your car makes noise, then that's actually some of the gasoline energy like is being used to create that. So I feel like people are the same way. Oh, that's for a cool. system too. That. Yeah. So like we're taking in energy, but then like it leaves via our body heat or like our movements, like with the muscle stuff and talking and blah, blah, blah. So very cool. Anyways. <laughs> um, some other research scientists say that houseplants are uh, and effective natural air purifiers and the bigger and leafier the plant the better mm, yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh side note there is a botanical garden near me and i just went the other day for a walk and this one plant literally looked like it came out of the jurassic park movies the leaves probably as big as my torso or bigger. Wow. They were huge. And it, like there were multiple of these plants. So that was pretty cool. Anyway. Very cool. Yeah. So they are really purifying the air over there. <laughs> <laughs> so the person who said that the amount of leaves surface area influences the rate of air purification was Bill Wolverton, a former NASA research scientist who conducted a 1989 plant study. Also, according to an article by Daniel Thompson, the health, size, and sustainability, no, suitability of your plant to your indoor growing environment determines how much oxygen it produces and the amount of harmful chemicals it removes from the air. Plants that are adapted to direct sunlight will produce the most oxygen, when they are kept in front of the window with a southern exposure, which I'm happy to say we have like big full length windows facing south of my house. So that's literally where all of our plants are. That's cool. Um, and it's great for um, passive solar too. Yes. Yes. It's very nice. Yeah. I'm actually in front of the sliding door right now and it's like a little toasty, even though it's cold outside. Uh, <laughs> so the effects of plants on your indoor oxygen levels is also influenced by how, ma how many plants you have. So mom must be like in a hundred percent oxygen right now because she has <laughs> like an oxygen so chamber. <laughs> Literally. Yes. Right. Right. Before we started recording, you're like, how many plants can I give to you next time I see you? Cause I have too many. <laughs> um, but, oh, I love all my plants though. You do. That's the thing. Yeah. I was actually very surprised you said that because you love your plants so much. And usually I'm like, oh, this is cool. You're like, yeah, it's cool. It's mine. No. <laughs> so. well, I'm starting not to be able to move around too much. So. <laughs> We're all my windows, you know, are filled with plants. So. Yes. And then, so you can noticeably improve indoor air quality by growing one house plant large enough to fill a six to eight inch pot for every 100 to 120 square feet of floor space. I feel like you should measure that out because like in our Zoom video right now, she has at least like two or three plants behind her that are probably like six inches apart instead of. Yes, I can purify the whole building. Yeah. <laughs> and I was amazed at that, that it doesn't take much. It takes like one plant to do so much. Yeah. You know? That's pretty I, cool. 
I th- yeah. So if people just yeah. add one plant to um, maybe the kitchen, that would be right. Yeah, hundred to hundred. Yeah, and that makes me feel so at work. Like I don't have a plant at work, which I am near a window, so I probably could. But there are people in my cube zone that have them, so now I'm thankful to them because it's apparently also affecting me because I'm probably like you know a hundred feet away from them. So that's right. That's and pretty uh, cool. depending on what you read, you know, on the internet, um, there are some plants that really absorb um, EMFs really well. Oh yeah. That's good with all the computers and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. And I think uh, the peace lily is one of those that you can put near your computer and it does well. Okay. I'm helping you out. Nice. And then, oh, so this is about at night. Um, so when you add plants to an interior space, it increases oxygen levels at night or can, and mom's favorite word, photosynthesis ceases <laughs> and plants typically respire like humans absorbing oxygen and releasing carbon dioxide a few plants like orchids uh, succulents my personal fave yes. and epitics what is that oh that, um, yeah <laughs> what epitetic uh bromelides okay those things which are any of various tropical American plants. So like palm trees or like Oh yeah, actually the which I can't grow. That you know what everybody sees in the store, they look like plastic and they're a little palm. Oh um, yeah. Those are really good. Oh, yeah. Okay. And that is nice. Oh, so those do wait. Oh, they do just the opposite. What? Opposite of what? Yeah. So I think what you're trying to say is that. Oh, they take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen. At night, yeah. Oh, so that's you can weird. Place these plants in your bedrooms to refresh air during the night. So while doing the research for this, and I had no idea um, that plants during the day, because they're getting, well, your southerly exposure, but they're getting yeah. sunlight. So if you put them in sunlight or a brightly lit room, mm-hmm. take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen. Well, what I didn't know is at night, they do the opposite. So, you know, you could maybe suffocate. I could suffocate it here. No, <laughs> so, um, oh but gosh. these, these um, plants you just mentioned, like the orchids and the succulents do the opposite. So if you have, and I don't do well with orchids, but like you and I both, I think we like succulents just because they're so easy to grow. Yeah. And I have pretty. tons of them. And in fact, yeah, three out of the four or five, I mentioned you to, you know, take or succulents. Yeah. Um, See, so that's why you're them. safe and you're not gonna suffocate yeah. is because you have so many <laughs> succulents. <Sorry. Yes. laughs> okay. So they do the opposite at night, which is really cool. I did not know that. That is. Um, now I have an orchid cactus, which I offered you too, which is really cool. So maybe that does, it's double the, you know, um, <laughs> It's like getting, a hybrid. I don't think yeah. it's, I think it's, just it's an orchid it. and a cactus. So. <laughs> so, which it is not. Everybody needs to look that up. But oh, I know. Yeah. All the people who know things about plants. I just watched a movie and this kid was super casual, just like walking through the movie, like, oh, that's this blah, blah, blah. Like in Latin, like that's this plant. That's that plant. I was like, I know nothing about this. Yeah. I'm, I don't know the names of my plants. I just know what, like when we grew up, what they were called. Um, like the peace lily is actually, we called it the closet plant because it grows, you know, in shade. You know, it doesn't have to be in a brightly lit room. Um, so yeah, those are actually how I know my plants. So when people go, oh, what's that? I have no this idea. Is, this is my uh, closet plant. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, what? But since everybody knows now, apparently they come in, oh, that's a pretty peace lily they're huge i have two huge ones that i cut in half all the time and give away um because they grow so well mm-hmm. um but yeah so i don't know the proper names of plants. okay those ones i've seen yeah the peace lilies i didn't know what it was called till you described it but i've seen those at again like botanical gardens and stuff and if you like let them go they're like as big as a tree like they get so tall they get do they huge yeah. i was looking at it i was like this looks familiar, but it's like the giant version of what I <laughs> So Yeah. So um, I, I should, for the uh, episode, 
take pictures maybe and, and put them on the website of all the different <gasps> of kind all of your houseplants. That would yeah, be so and, cute. Yes. And then people could maybe tell me what they are. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Name this plant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is this? Let's do that. Oh my gosh. Yes. Let's do that. And we, we would definitely like to see other people post their plants. My favorite plants, of course, and the ones I have the most of, and I have a lot of different varieties, but the ones that um, grow easily, I, I'm pretty, my Which plants funny, have to be hardy. <laughs> yeah, but you're like super attentive because I've almost yes. killed stuff and you're like, how did you do that? <laughs> I know. I give you the easiest plants to grow and I go there and, and they're dead and I go, how do you do that? <laughs> they're not. I will let everyone know that they have come back to life. My cactus is giant now and oh, cool. our neighbor have- gave us a angel wing begonia. I only know the name again because she wrote it down and like stuck it on the plant for me. But she gave it to us when I had like one little leaf and now it's like three feet tall. Wow. (laughs) Because apparently it doesn't go out. It just goes up. So... (laughs) Oh, cool. You'll have to put that picture on yeah, the website. It's pretty cool. And even it flowered for us and it had like these pretty pink little flowers that like came off one stem and like drooped down. Wow. So, yep. That's exciting. Cause yeah, last time I was there, okay, she was wondering why they weren't doing well. And I said, well, a little water would help. <laughs> okay. I can't even say I, Jeff waters them and they like it and it's good. <laughs> I, well, I can tell you I, in my opinion, there are certain plants you can't overwater. The peace lily being one, it just, <laughs> a, you know, you can drown that. And there's another one I have that, you know, grows up on the walls and stuff. It starts mm, creeping. And that yes. one too, you can I just, have that one too. Yeah. Yeah. You can't overwater them. Now, mm-hmm. cactus, of course, and succulents, you can. You can. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about some of the plants that produce the most oxygen. According to the Lung Health Institute, the top five plants for increasing oxygen are the Chinese evergreen, number, that's number one. Number two is the Gerbera daisy, hmm. and number three is a money plant, and I do oh, have I one of those. One. Yeah. yeah, I have one in the, the spare like... room, and that, it's almost touching the ceiling now, so I don't oh, quite really know cool. what to do with it. Yeah. And number four is the snake plant, which I like, you know, AKA mother-in-law's tongue, but um, yeah, I had one once and I didn't do well with it. So, ah, and this is the one um, that I think we were talking about earlier, the Erica palm, the one that you can see in the stores that looks plastic. Okay. I think I overwatered mine when I had mine. Oh, oops. So (laughs) we have linked um, that article in the show notes. So it's very interesting. It does go into other toxins those plants remove from the air, such as formaldehyde, Mm. et cetera. And another article we linked is from the Cure Joy website, and it talks about nine plants that release oxygen even at night. And those are the aloe vera, the snake plant, the neem tree, holy basil, a.k.a. Tulsi. Yeah, Yeah, and I think everybody knows that because a lot of people drink that tea. Yes. And I had no idea. So I was thinking on, I should look into getting the seeds or buying one. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've never seen them, you know, just where I shop. So it will be interesting to get mm-hmm. one. Orchids, the orange Gerbera, um, and then the people tree, Christmas cactus, which most people have. Do you have one? Yes, I do. Yes. Well, remember we call it the holiday cactus because it doesn't just <laughs> at Easter. At Christmas. It blooms at <laughs> Easter. It blooms at when I, like I'm pretty sure the Fourth of July. Oh, that's it's cool. Like, yeah. And what color are the blooms on yours? They're red. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. I think mine are pink. Pink. And oh, that's white. cool. Okay, yeah, because yeah, our your aunt, my great aunt has one and that's why I got the name because she's like well it's more like a holiday plant (laughs) every holiday it's been blooming (laughs) yeah that's nice that's really nice and the Erica palm so and here here's an interesting fact according to ecology.com it is estimated that between 70 and 80 percent of the oxygen in the atmosphere is actually produced by marine plants what how does it like get this is a I know. stupid question. How does it get out of the water? <laughs> <laughs> so because so many species of marine plant life are technically algae, which we do eat. Some people eat that. Okay. Um, 
That makes algae, the plant, singularly responsible for producing most of the oxygen we breathe. Hmm. The earth contains almost three times as much water surface as land surface. Mm -hmm. So it stands to reason that marine plant life produces much more oxygen than land plants. Ocean plants may be difficult to see because they often span great distances underwater, but they are essential to our atmosphere. Oh so yeah, gosh. that's pretty cool, huh? That so, is pretty cool. And a lot of it goes up on the beach. You know, what is that? Um, oh, that's like the kelp and stuff. Yeah, though. the kelp and stuff. Yeah. yeah but it's but, still, it's oh, probably yeah. dead when it's on the beach, but in the water. Yeah, it's not doing much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that makes me, you know, because like, pure you know save the oceans clean up the water whatever whatever you always think about doing it for the animal life but i feel like they could use this a tactic and it might make people i mean everyone loves you know save the turtles like absolutely for that but if you're like do this because this is what's keeping you alive <laughs> like, i think you're I exactly know, right <laughs> uh, i think you're right producing oxygen to help you live so help it <laughs> Yeah, because um, most people um, talk about th the destruction of the rainforest, which is very sad. But when I was doing mm -hmm. the research, I think only 30% of the oxygen is actually produced by the rainforest, though we need the which rainforest, obviously, yeah. um, like for habitat and everything else. But yes, I think if people realize that it's the marine plants that are doing most of the work, we might change our attitude and stop polluting the waters as much as we do yeah. and throwing everything you know into the water like instead of people taking their medicines down to the fire department or wherever they locally take them if they're old they put them down the toilet and then uh, they all drink them eventually y'all you can't so, say y'all you do too <laughs> what i don't i don't throw my stuff down the toilet no but you drink water so oh yeah well yeah oh i see, see what you mean y'all um yeah well everybody yeah that's why i have um reverse osmosis because yeah. um the water we we can live fairly long without food i mean longer a lot longer than three days um and i think they say isn't that three days without three water, days then? For water yeah yeah mm -hmm. Not that any, I mean, all of that would be bad if you had no food or water, but um, yeah, our water is very important. Yeah. Now let's look at some interesting facts about plants that maybe we didn't know, specifically houseplants. Let's see. So houseplants can relieve stress and brighten your mood. And having indoor plants has also been linked to creative thinking, huh? Says, Sally Augustine, the head of Design with Science. Okay, I feel like I really need to bring a plant to work now. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I need to be creative. Um, well, even more creative than you are. Oh, thank you. Too kind. Uh, <laughs> the peace lily made NASA's list of top indoor air filtering houseplants. There you go. It reduced levels of the toxic chemicals like benzene, trichloroethylene, formaldehyde, and ammonia when tested in a landmark 1989 NASA study. And the fact that there's just formaldehyde floating around in my house is weird to me because I don't live in like, what are those called? The parlor, the... Oh, you're, you're thinking of um, the funeral parlor. Funeral parlor. I don't well, live in a funeral parlor. So why is there formaldehyde floating yeah. around my house? <laughs> a lot of things off gas formaldehyde. Um, okay. Number one would be press board. So if you have any press board in your house. And um, also just um, the chemicals and stuff that they spray on your couches and rugs, et cetera, to, for um, flame retardants. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of chemicals. Okay. Well, maybe since I have a lot of old things, maybe it's... <laughs> You're it's right. That's <laughs> probably better because the wood, you know, it's it's real wood as opposed to um treated wood, you know, or okay. press press board. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And you have a brick house, so there you go. That helps. I mean, there's but, wood studs and stuff, but yeah. But then there's other things, you know, like um, you have that gets out of the air that comes from the ground. Now, I just I just can't remember. Oh, the radon. <laughs> the radon. Yeah, there yep. you go. Yeah. And that's natural too. I mean, there's a lot of natural occurring yeah. chemicals that, that happen that can harm us. So, or if you have granite in your home, same thing. I mean, if it's a natural stone, mm -hmm. things just off gas, it's just what it is. Yeah. 
No, I have wood. I have the butcher block countertops actually, which I just redid. Yes, well, you did. Oiled, I guess. Okay. So some plants have medical qualities like aloe vera, which can be applied to burns and sunburns. Also, peppermint, Tulsi, can be used to make tea. And I know the aloe growing up, we always had one and it was like, oh, like, I burned my finger on the stove and we'd like go over and like cut a little piece off and use it. It works, doesn't it? It does. It, does. it works really well. Uh, houseplants can also provide aromatherapy. Lavender, obviously highly popular plant. And you can find that fragrance in many scented products like soaps and bath gels. There is research that confirms its ability to calm Lavender scent has been shown to reduce anxiety in several studies, including a February 2010 comparison study of dental patients waiting for their appointments. That's cool because I know a few people who get like super stressed out about going to the dentist. I don't. I love my dentist. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I just like chat it up with the hygienist all the time. Citrus trees, particularly dwarf varieties of lemon and orange trees, can grow indoors if they can receive enough daily sun. And it's pretty cool. The dwarf um, citrus trees and like fruit bearing trees were like in vogue in Europe way back when, like 16, 1400s, I think. Someone can check that. But I saw a little display about that and they would like raise them in the house and then like pollinate like cross pollinate them to create like random fruits and stuff which was oh i had no idea yeah so that was like the thing to do back then was have like little like fruit bearing house plants very cool anyways yeah um also in a rutgers based study researchers found evidence of cognitive improvement and increased memory retention when people were exposed to orange blossom and grapefruit fragrances I should like, I think I have grapefruit essential oil. I should like put that around me right before I listen to one of my classes, <laughs> my online master's classes, so I can like re- retain the information. Yes, you can get a diffuser and put it in there. There you go. Yeah. Okay. And lastly, receiving flowers can boost your spirits and so can growing your own flowering plants, which I would rather do that because cut flowers make me sad when they die. So like it may boost my spirits at the beginning, but then at the end of the process, I'm sad. A small study in the December 2017 issue of Complementary Therapies in Medicine found that women who looked at fresh red roses for a mere three minutes experienced psychological and physiological relaxation. So you, I think they have like tiny indoor rose bushes too. You can grow as a house plant. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Um, so let's leave our listeners with another fact about plants that we don't discuss. We only discussed house plants, but there are also tons of studies that talk about people getting out into nature and enjoying the plants in their neighborhood. The studies talk about how it can improve your mental health to go out and walk in nature and just enjoy the surroundings around you. Find a walking trail near you and enjoy the sights and peacefulness of getting out of the house. A lot of cities have areas where you can do this, though I know some of our listeners live in cities where this is not an option. In that case, indoor plants may be even more important for you and you can always Google what plants are easiest to grow. Oh, also rooftop gardens are becoming more and more popular. So that may be um, something to look into if you live in a high rise. Add a little greenery, flowers, herbs, etc., to your surroundings and send the photos to saltyabouthealth at gmail.com. Woo. <laughs> and we would love to post them on the website. Plus, um, last time I was visiting you, remember we ran into a lady who had an amazing yard and she took us oh, on a two hour tour. My gosh, my neighbor is the coolest. She just like, I said, I, so when I was talking about the giant plants, that was actually at like a botanical garden, but she could basically be a botanical, like her backyard could be a botanical garden also. She just has, oh, uh, it's just full of really cool plants. It's really cool. 
Amazing. Yeah. I mean, and even things that look like weeds, she's saying, oh, yeah. oh, this is this and blah, blah, blah. So it's kind of like a wild skip. It is. She took us through everything and it was so fascinating. So, you know, she has butterfly plants and this and that. And mm -hmm. it was really cool. Yeah, it was really cool. And she has like bird houses and stuff too. Um, so it's like quite the little habitat down there. Well, thanks everyone for listening. And again, we want to hear from you guys. We always want to hear from you guys. Please, please, please reach out to us. And uh, here are just a few ways that you can do that. You can reach out via Instagram and Facebook. Find us at Salty About Health. Even Snapchat at Salty Health. You can email us at saltyabouthealth at gmail.com. Or if you just want to find all that in one place, check out our website, saltyabouthealth.com. We've got all the ways for you to listen and connect there. And finally, if you like what you hear today, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. We really appreciate it. So, Mom, if they want to hear from you on social media, where can they find you? Okay. I am a certified health coach, and I do coach one-on-one. -on -one. So if you're interested, you can contact me at mary at feedyourselfhealthy.com. I also do research for people who are interested in finding alternative approaches to do in conjunction with the health issue or illness their doctor is treating them for. So again, just reach out to me at mary at feedyourselfhealthy.com or follow me on Twitter at feedyourselfhealthy, which is spelled F-E-E-D-U-R-S-E-L-F-H-L-T-H-Y. That's where they can find me. Cool. Okay. And if you guys want to find me, I'm not a health coach, but I'm on Instagram hanging out there at Delaney.a. Find out how to spell my name in the show notes and everything. And of course, I'll be the one mainly keeping an eye on the social media. So always happy to chat with you guys via the Salty Network. Also, just want to shout out our intro and outro music. It is by Yule. And you can find her at www.yulearts.com. That's E-U-L-A-R-T-S. You can also find her on Instagram at Yule underscore arts or Spotify and YouTube. Check her out. Her piano music and everything else is amazing. And until next time, stay, stay salty. Stay salty.